Hey everybody, this is Felix. Welcome back to InventBox where the solution is right around the corner. And in this tutorial, we are going to set up something called SSL, which you may know as HTTPS on your website. Now, HTTPS is a security layer and that's actually what it stands for, Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, where they've taken all of HTTP and they've added what's called an SSL and TLS security layer on top of it. So basically what it does is where HTTP, anyone, a hacker or somebody who's trying to do damage could come in and look and just see what data is going back and forth between your computer and the website, which could be really bad, especially if you're trying to send important information like credit card numbers or passwords. Now with HTTPS, they've added a layer of encryption on the data so that nobody can look in and see what data is being sent and steal it. Only the website and your computer know what data is being sent back and forth. Encryption is kind of like uh, a different language. It's converting it into a different language. For example, I could say something in Chinese. Ni hao, ting de dong wo ma. And only a Chinese person would understand what I'm trying to say. Of course, it's not a perfect analogy because every time a new computer connects to the website, they will generate a new language to talk to each other with. And that's going to be based on something called SSL keys, which I'll explain in a little bit. So in SSL, the first thing that happens is a handshake. And that's just basically where the, the server and your computer, which we call the client, client and server, they initially talk to each other. First, the client, your computer says to the server, hello, this is me. These are the different SSL versions that I can do. And the server says, oh, hello, client. How about we communicate on this specific version? Then the server sends what's called a certificate to the client. That is registered with something called a certificate authority. They are basically a list of all of the valid websites that have been officially registered so that we know that when you go to google.com if we take a look at this again we know that when we go to google.com this is registered with somebody with a certificate authority very specifically so nobody else can even fake google.com you remember in the last videos we have actually tricked our computer into taking someone to a different website, even though it says one website, it goes to another. Well, if you have the SSL certificates, then that won't work and you will know about it because this green lock will be gone. Okay. So after they exchange certificates and verify who each other are. Then they exchange encryption keys and they actually use these keys to generate the unique language between the server and the client every single time a new client connects. So they all have their own individual languages and those are generated using the keys. If you're curious, 
HTTPS uses a symmetric algorithm, which means it uses a single key for both encryption and decryption. However, this key is mutually agreed upon asymmetrically using the servers and clients' unique keys. And for more information about that, you can read up on SSL and TLS. But basically, after this handshake happens, your computer, the client, and the server are satisfied that they are talking to the right computer and they have secretly invented a language that only these two computers can understand that they're going to use to communicate. With that being said, let's head over and start setting up registering our websites with SSL certificates so that we can get our domain officially registered with the certificate authorities. Now, before, a while ago, this used to be a pretty complicated and expensive process, but thanks to the hard workers over at Let's Encrypt, Let's Encrypt.org, um, we now have a very simple, quick, uh, and free way to register our websites with certificate authority, which is really, really nice. Now, I recommend, I, I highly recommend running your web server off of the Linux operating system if you can. You can do it on Windows, and I'll show you how, but there is so much more support for Linux. It's going to be less buggy. It's just a better idea to go with Linux. If you don't have a computer that you can install Linux on, uh, you can get something called a Raspberry Pi, which is a tiny little computer, it fits in the palm of your hand. You can buy these for about $35. And this is actually what I ran my first web server off of when I was in high school. And that runs Linux by default. So what we're going to do is go down here and follow their instructions. It's a lot easier if you have shell access, which if you're setting your own web server up, then you will. We're going to use a program that they have built called CertBot. This is for Linux. And we're going to install this. If you are doing this on Windows, then you're going to want a program called WinACME and you want this GitHub project here. What you'll do is just install this and they will, uh, if you go over here to the wiki and basic usage They'll have a section here for how to install it. And then you just run this exe with administrator privileges and follow the steps. And it should be very similar to what we're going to do on Linux. So the cool thing about CertBot is you can select the web server you're using. There's Apache. And they have so many different operating systems, most of which are Linux or some form of Unix. And I'm running on Ubuntu, the latest version. So we'll do this. And we'll go ahead and just install this using the commands that they give us. Okay, and it looks like it's in my home folder. There it is, certbot auto. So there it is, and we give it the Apache flag, it looks like, according to this. And we just run this. So to go through and install some things, 
All right, the first thing at once is an email. And this is for renewing things and just general notices. Agree to the terms of service. No, I don't want to share my email. And here they'll let you choose which things that you want to set up SSL for. And I want it for both of these. So I'm just going to leave this blank and hit enter. And there you can see they went through and open new certificates. It enabled everything. And this option is whether or not you want the browser to automatically redirect people to HTTPS if they're just on HTTP. And that is generally a good idea. So I'm going to enter two. And that's it. This process should be pretty similar if you're also running the Windows version. And once you have that, the last thing that we need to do is make sure that the SSL port is opened up on our router. Remember that for our uh, regular websites, we used the port 80 now you're going to head back to your router. Yours will be the same as it was before, probably uh, 192.168.1.1, but mine is this. And you're going to go back into wherever you've had your port forwarding set up before. And then down here, you just need to make sure that you have added port 443, that's the SSL TLS port for HTTPS. Make sure that is both inbound and the internal ports are 443. And then it's gonna be the same IP address as your regular web server. When you have that, you can apply the changes. All right, let's test squid.ml. Aha, there we go. It redirected us to HTTPS, and we've got our little green HTTPS indicator by Let's Encrypt. So now we've got our free website, we've got our DNS and DDNS resolution working properly, taking us back to our web server, which is now registered with the certificate authorities. And so we have a secure connection that we don't have to worry about passwords and credit card information being stolen on, or at least theoretically, because hackers are actually pretty smart. But uh, before we leave, I want to just take you in and show you what certbot did. We'll take a look at our virtual hosts files. We now actually have another file that it has added for us, squid le ssl. This is the configuration for all of the new SSL stuff, of course. You can see it mimicked everything we had before, except this time it's included the module for SSL, and it has included some options, and then the path to where Let's Encrypt and CertBot generated our certifications or, or our uh, certificates, I mean. And then when we told it to do the redirect, this it added 
into our regular virtual host, it tells it, okay, we're allowed to redirect the URL basically. And if it comes in on www.squid.ml or squid.ml, then basically rewrite the URL, rewrite the URL, redirect it to the exact same thing, except make it HTTPS. And then that of course gets fired back through to the SSL version of this file, which is the LE SSL one. All right, well, that's it. We've taken our website from just a thought to totally free, except the electricity it takes to run the server, I guess. Um, and we even have a secure connection here. I hope this series has been very helpful to you. And uh, if you have any other further questions about anything, please leave a comment.